So let's consider a chunk of fluid. And here, to make my life easier, let's, let's let this chunk basically be a cube. We'll let the top of the cube be at the surface in the fluid, so we know that there's going to be a force acting down on that top surface that uh, will be due to atmospheric pressure. My cube will have some depth, H, and then again, because it's a cube, uh, each of these surfaces will have some area, A, and so what we want to do is we want to think about what's going on with that cube. What are the forces that are acting on it? Well, obviously, there's going to be a force acting at the bottom that's pushing up on that cube. So if I think about the free body diagram of the cube here, I notice that there's going to, that, that force points up. There's the force due to the atmospheric pressure that's pointing down. And again, this uh, cube of fluid has some mass in it. So therefore, there will be some weight force that also acts on the cube that's pulling it down. So I notice that I have one force acting up due to the pressure at the bottom of the cube, uh, yeah, bottom of my chunk of fluid, and two forces that are acting down. Now, that cube isn't moving anywhere. So we're going to assume that I don't have flowing fluids here. What I have is I have a static fluid. And so if that cube doesn't move, that means I know that these, these, three force, these three forces must be in static equilibrium. And so if I add them up, they have to be equal to zero. And so that tells me that the force pointing up, the force due to the pressure on the bottom, has got to be equal to the two forces pointing down, so the force due to atmospheric pressure at the top, and the weight of the cube. And so all I'm going to do is use my definition for density and say, well, I know that the mass is equal to density times the volume, and so I can plug that into my equation. And so what it gives me is this expression, that, the, again, the force pointing up from the bottom, that, the magnitude of that force has got to be equal to the magnitude of the force due to atmospheric pressure, plus the density of the fluid times the volume of my cube times gravitational acceleration. And now I can divide that equation by the area. So I take that equation and divide each term by the area, the surface area. So I have two pressure terms here. The one on the left hand side of the equation is the pressure at the bottom of that chunk of fluid. The second pressure is atmospheric pressure. That's at the top, at the surface. And now I've got rho GH and of course that came from that volume is equal to the area of my cube times its height and so then those areas cancel out, and I'm left with, with the density of the fluid times gravitational acceleration times the height of the cube. What this gives me is an expression that, will, that tells me what the pressure is at any depth h below the surface. Well, what I can do is I can take this expression to not just think about the pressure at any point below the surface, but to think about the pressure difference between any two points within the fluid. And so if I were to redo, if, basically if I were to move my cube, go through the same process, I would have the pressure on the bottom, uh, the force due the pressure on the bottom pushing up, the force due the pressure on top pointing down, the weight of that cube of fluid also pointing down, go through that same process, and what I end up with is this expression. So again, it tells you that P2, which is the pressure at the lower point in the fluid, has got to be equal to P1, the pressure at the higher point in the fluid, plus rho g h, so the density of the fluid times 9.8 meters per second squared gravitational acceleration times h, which is how far vertically point 0.2 sits below point 0.1.